So contrary to what it appears, I do actually have family outside of midnight. And they don't usually show up on my channel, and that is because my brother is about to mix Miller Light, Miller Light, Miller High Life, Miller High Life. My bad. Little bit of dignity with orange juice. It's the champagne of beer, so it basically makes a mimosa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So you might be wondering why I did three learn to play violin, not you learn to play violin from me. I learned to play violin the videos. And then I just stopped. And I want to say that the answer is because I have really bad tendonitis and I'm getting surgery for it in a week. And holding the bow properly is painful and I didn't want to learn to hold the bow improperly. But I've also been dealing with tendonitis for like an entire year trying to get my workers comp to approve the surgery. And you can see in my other videos where I'm wearing all sorts of different hand braces. But since I've been doing stuff with this hand for a year, it's kind of a weak excuse to say that it's because of my tendonitis, when in reality, it's because learning a classical instrument is really difficult. And getting a lot of keytars, it's really easy. Which reminds me, I have another keytar. So everybody who ordered the Behringer MS-1 or the Behringer MS-101 uh, got theirs like eight months ago, unless you wanted the blue one. And I wanted the blue one. So it was called the MS-101 because it's a clone of the Roland SH-1, which was from like 1982 to 1986. It's a monophonic analog synth like the original. My specialty is not analog sense. So I'm not going to sit here and read you a bunch of things about how it has four simultaneous oscillators with a noise generator when I only 70% understand what that is. So instead, I'm going to answer the question that everybody comes to my videos to ask anyway, which is, should I buy this keytar? So this is not like the other keytars on the market. This is a synth but it's not a synth in the same way that the AX Edge or the Sonogenic or the SHS-10. Apparently everybody but me calls it the Axe synth, but I think that's stupid, so we're gonna go with the AX synth. It's not the same. These are synths that have a bank of pre-made sounds and you switch between them and you can switch back to other ones. And this is pure manipulation of the raw sound. You have basic sounds and four billion controls to change how they sound and you just build the sound from scratch. It's amazing. It's also monophonic so it's, you know, you're not getting multiple notes at once. Her feet are too big to fit in her ears, so I have to scratch inside her ears. You have your, uh... Where did you go? Oh! There we go. Because you're controlling the sound on just a, a raw level, you can't set it to trumpet if you want to make a trumpet sound. You need to understand why trumpets sound like trumpets and then be able to communicate that to the computer in, a, in an analog way. There's no computer in this, Polly. Um, but you have to build the sounds from the ground up and then you need to remember how you make them um, because there's no presets on this. That said, it is also a MIDI controller. So hang on a sec who's ready for sacrilege. <coughs> There we go. You can take this quality tone manipulation instrument. You can make it sound like a knockoff of the Yamaha Portable Grand keyboard that you bought in 2002 for $75. Yeah, you can take, take this beautiful raw sound engine and make it sound 
like a um, crappy synth piano or you know whatever this one is. Still piano. Still piano. Oh, because oh, I'm on reverb, dumbass. But that's not why we're here. We're not here to discuss that you can take a beautiful sound engine and turn it into a crappy MIDI sound. Um, although you can do that. Get out of there. Remember when somebody, like, way back in one of my videos said that they don't like metal-housed MIDI cables because they get stuck in things? Um, I'm not gonna say I was wrong, but I will say that on some level you were right. Due to the way that MIDI works, if you plug this into a polyphonic MIDI sound generator, you will get polyphonic sound, and it is velocity sensitive. Um, if you want to play it as a MIDI controller, you can get the exact same sounds out of the Sonogenic, the Rock Band 3 controller, the Alesis Vortex, the AX Edge, all of them can sound exactly the same. Does mean you're sort of ripping the soul out of it. God can judge you for that. Keyboard God. It's got a little bit of heft to it, but it's not as heavy as some of the keytars I own. Got semi-weighted keys, which is like halfway between uh, uh, the AX Edge and like an actual acoustic floor keytar. I swear the Vortex's keys are like reverse weighted. They are aggressively springy, but whatever. All of the sliders except one feel like they're high quality. The strap button are on pretty sturdily. Uh, the strap button on the neck side is connected to the key, the, um, the neck grip. And so if you wanted to get this and play it with a strap, but you didn't like how this, uh, looks on it, you are out of luck. See? Did it again. And also, there's no batteries. You cannot control this with batteries. You are going to be using this power adapter, and the cord for the power adapter is only three and a half feet long. Behringer doesn't sell a longer power adapter, so you would have to get one third party, which voids your warranty. You can also maybe get a battery pack for it, which again, you would have to get third party and void your warranty. If you're playing this how Behringer intended, you're going to be standing up and moving within like a two foot wide space. And that's probably not a big deal for people who are buying this as a tabletop synth, but it has strap buttons. It's a keytar. The other thing that annoys me is that the pitch controller, this, feels super cheap. This is just the plastic in it I don't like. It's... I don't like how this feels. It's located in a good spot. It's just the plastic feels really cheaply made. Um, the pitch control on the neck only goes up. You can't pitch bend down. You It snaps, so you can't just hold it there and then go down and then go back up. Uh, so that's annoying, but it does have the mod button on the very end of the handle. And I realized I like it there. The um, other keytar I have that has buttons on the end of the neck is the uh, the Soviet Youth 21 keytar, and uh, these two have made me realize I like having a button there. I know it's not conventional, but it's really nice to be able to grab something and flip it with your thumb. But that said, despite the fact that I've just been making it sound like a dying cat, it sounds really good. Fuck you.
you can scramble everything up and within like move one control and get a good sound you can just it's just fun it's straight up fun i think i probably just played for like eight minutes without realizing that i did got distracted playing this the camera timed out and i for do you mind this one you can spend a lot of work getting it to sound good there's a lot of manipulation that has to go on and yes, part of that is that I don't speak Russian, but this guitar, which I have to compare to this one just because they're my only analog synth guitars, uh, has very few settings where it sounds like genuinely good. And this one, I can mix it up, can change one or two controls, and then have a guitar or a sound that's really... It sounds good, it's enjoyable, it's not always what I'm looking for. But it's, you know, apart from like... Okay, I have to stop playing it or else I'm gonna get distracted and never finish this video, even though I have a script. I wrote a script. So that's another thing to keep into consideration is that if you like write music and then want to perform it live or something, you're gonna need to either get good at remembering how sounds sound and listening to something and going, oh, that's this wave and things like that, or you can just uh, not have the same sound happen ever again. So you record something and you go and set it down and then your cat knocks it off the table and then you come back and there's your, your sound is now messed up. Uh, record. So I can set a sequence, because it's a sequencer, that's what it does, and then... And if you want to get chords, and you don't want to get really, really good at... If you don't want to get really, really good at that, you kind of need those in a monophonic environment. So that's really good. Uh, the only other thing that annoys me, that you've probably seen me do throughout this whole video, because I'm going to edit it that way, is that... I I've put in straight guy cables, I've put in angled cables, I've held it like this, I've held it like that, I've put it on its side, I've played it like this. Um, also, if this is your preferred keytar in bed posture, good keytar for it. I've done all the things and the output jack still won't hold my cable and yes, I've wrapped it around the strap button too. I know the hacks, I can't make it work. I cannot get this to not fall out, and yes, I can fix that with a piece of medical tape, but this is 2019. We have the technology for this to not happen, so if I'm doing something wrong, please let me know in the comments, because I'm losing my mind over this. Mind is going bye-bye, I can't do it. So if you've stuck through to this part of the video, here's where I'm answering the question that you probably came in with anyway, mm. which is, should I buy this? And I'm gonna assume that your keytar options are what's currently available for sale and you're not buying anything used. So you have the Sonogenic, the Alesis Vortex, the AX Edge, and the Behringer MS1 slash MS101. So should you get it? So if you want an analog synth, this is the one you want. You want a monophonic synth? This is the one you want. It's the only one that fully fills those requirements. You can get a decent way there 
with the Vortex, where you can get a synthesizer instrument and then set every control to a fader, and then you can play it like that. But it's not quite the same, it's not as intuitive, it's a pain to set up. If you just want to play analog synth, this is your best option. Uh, you can also play it via MIDI. Again, you're draining its soul, but you can play it via MIDI. Or if you want a keytar and you know you want to learn analog synth at the same time, but you want a keytar now, and you don't have plans on buying, uh, owning thir 13 keytars, Twelve keytars. See? It's fine. Twelve keytars. This might be good because you can buy it and play it as a keytar and then learn the analog synth as you go. Just remember it doesn't have batteries. If you just want to use it as a MIDI controller, you're gonna have mm. a billion controls that don't do anything. These aren't programmable with MIDI. You're just gonna have them here and you can just like... Mm like flip the switches around if you want to sound cool. But by sound cool, I mean look cool, because it's not going to actually do any changes to your sound. You will just have all of these billions of decorative controls, as opposed to how I play the Alesis Vortex most often, where I only have seven useless controls. Buying this and then um, only using it for MIDI is kind of like buying a street legal car that is designed and modified to go racing on the track, but you only use it to drive 25 miles an hour to your nearest 7-Eleven to buy Slurpees and then drive it home. Like, technically you're not wrong, but boy are you wrong. The Red Ones had a lot of issues implementing MIDI well. I don't know if they patched that, I don't know if it was a hardware problem, I didn't research it enough to have like an actual knowledge of this, but you need to be aware that there is a chance that you would be purchasing a keytar to play via MIDI that isn't very good at playing via MIDI. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, you're MIDI. I did live stream my first thoughts about this. I, I live streamed all my initial thoughts. And I was thinking maybe I should live stream more. And I'm personally kind of thrilled that we have a keytar that is so drastically different from everything else that's out there. Anyhow, uh, my tendonitis surgery is December 11th, and hopefully I will have gotten up off my butt and edited this video before that so that you guys will know ahead of time. I have been informed by several of my friends that I have to attempt to vlog as I'm waking up from anesthesia. So that'll be cool. Um, I did write a script before I did this one, and I want to know how you feel about that. I think it'll make it easier to edit the video, but I also usually don't script these because I feel like they wouldn't be as genuine. Uh, so let me know if this made things easier to understand, if you didn't notice a difference, if uh, you really liked it, really didn't like it. Please let me know because I need to figure out what the crap I'm doing with my YouTube. Uh, so I don't upload very often, so if you want to subscribe to me, you probably also want to hit the notification button, because otherwise my videos are going to get buried in your subscription box, and they're going to get buried by, you know, people who actually do YouTube, like, professionally and have upload schedules. So if you don't want to miss me, uh, do that notification button, please. How do you... How do you end and end slate, Midnight? You're maybe the keytar kitty. Meow. She's not a very good cat, but I'm fond of her.